Hello guys and welcome to a new Star Division 2 video today by myself, Vulcan and Attack Power. Hi guys, always good to be here. In this video we have for you game one of a best of three between Onord and Kurz in the third place final of Division 1 Season 9 playoffs of the Still Division 2 League. Today they are playing on Tali Ihantala and on our left in the red team we have Onord playing on the allied side using the 44th Guards Rifles and the Maverick deployment type. And on our right in the blue team, we have Kurz on the Axis side using the first Lovash and the Maverick deployment type. I know you have something to say about uh, the Lovash here, Attack Power. Yeah, I think that's a really dumb choice. I, I don't know why <laughs> you would pick that division on this map. I I and I like first Lovash, I, I do. I think it's very strong. It's got a lot of powerful tools, but those powerful tools are not good here. Uh, way too much open ground. Your, your Tehrans are essentially useless outside of a couple key er like couple areas um 44th has got t34 85s i'm not sure how you deal with those um you know once if if a nord gets up some aa that's it i mean that's basically like you're you, they got the 1944 variant so they can sit at 2k range first lovash really doesn't have much in the 2k department at all um yep i i, I don't know why you would pick this division for this map like i'm, I'm actually yeah, also also got the SU-152 on the 44th as well, haven't they? So yeah, big I, HE heavy hitters at range. Yeah, I don't. I I literally have no concept of why you would pick this either first or second. Like I do, like this isn't a counter pick by any stretch, and it it seems crazy to me to be a first pick. I I don't I don't know why you picked this map this division here. I really don't. I, it just and you can definitely hunker down with uh, infantry like availability in like terms of like the numbers of your squads are very sort of chunky. So you can kind of just like be very sticky on some of these flags and in a long game, he might be able to like do some funky business on the top side of the map here or maybe around the bottom at the bottom of the lake, um, you know, that kind of thing. But he's definitely getting nowhere in the middle of the map. Um, well, yeah, I mean, the entire division. Yeah, the entire middle of the map here. And the other problem is, too, they're slow. So it's one thing if it was a fast division, it could get into positions early and then hunker down. It can't even do that. So like. I, I'm again I just don't know what the thought process <laughs> was for picking this division I really just don't all right let's have a quick look at what's going down here on the top side for O Nord we have the snipers the flamers there's going to be the 45 mil AT gun we've got some guards in there uh, we also have the OB 25 and an SU 43 and an 85 mil AA at the start of the game with an SU 152 good call guards at the back Good call. Uh, further down, we have the Sniper, SG-43, another OB, some Snipers, Flamers, uh, another AA piece at the start, two star 25 mil with another SU-152. And on the bottom side, just one guard to hold the flags down there. For Kurs, on the top side, he's going for the Shvalosa, lots of Shvalosa, <laughs> with the Hazorok, a 40 mil AA for him as well, with the Aglasok, Hasogoyo Sodoshok, with the Turan 2 that was going the wrong way for a little while there. Um, Hasorok, Hasogoyo Sodoshok with the 40 M um, going to the middle, that's 75 mil, it's basically a pack 40 with a 75 mil gun there with the Feldado Toyaron. Uh, in the middle, we've got Lang Sodoshok and another infantry gun. Well, I think they're technically an artillery piece. Yeah. Uh, and then on the bottom side, he's got the Kadak Palaso, Kasadok, Kasago, the Sodoshok, Toldi, and Toran. So it looks like he's going for a little play on the bottom side here early on. Yeah, that's definitely interesting. We don't see that very often, to be sure. Um, this Shvarlo's a blob. It's quite entertaining. In the middle, Lang Sodoshok going to get uh, pinned early on by the SG, but does manage to smoke itself off without taking any damage. So that's nice. Shvarlo's that have got into position, they will want to stop the... Flame is getting close, however, they are both targeting the SG-43 right now, rather than the Flamers that are running towards them. Uh, OB is going to catch up when the Shvalos are further up, um, or it unloads, and then not the SG-152 coming in there, absolutely blasted. And the Flamer got close enough to the Shvalos to push it out of position. That's oh. really, really bad news yep. for uh, Kurs here at the start. Yeah, not Turan great. Turan 2 trying to... OB there. Yep, trying to support... Isn't gonna do a great job, truth be told. Yeah. The turn two does have decent HE for our support, so it can kill an OB quite quickly. And does stop it from killing the double Shvalos, which is gonna pin down the guards. In the middle, we've got the OB that's gonna be pinning down uh, some of the infantry here, although it's going for the pack 40 that's been unloaded in the open. The OB could get the better of that. That would be really bad news again for Kurz here at the start of the game. Yeah, losing that pack's a big loss. I mean, you get plenty of them, but it's still 
seven, uh, 60 points, you're losing for little to nothing. This OB should take it out, especially with the SG helping. If it is, it no, it's hitting the infantry. Yep, the SG-152 going to be hitting the 75 mil gun further back as well. And the, the nasty thing about losing the 75 mil IT gun there is the SG-152 won't have a threat against it early on and can definitely just continue to dominate this middle area of the map, which we expected going in. Uh, but yeah, Kurz still making this push on the bottom side. It is going to be very slow, so Nord is going to have plenty of time to react to that. The Shvalosa that we're holding in the center uh, further up are both going to be going down as the 85 mil AA gets involved there. Yeah, this is just nasty looking. Like if you look already, like look, look at the difference in forces already. And we've barely started. They're on mirror income. So it's not like any player will have an advantage really at any point. Um, these early A phase plays actually really matter in the Maverick on Maverick match because getting those early points can really set you up to win the long game. Uh, SU-152 chunking out that Goya Shota shock there. 40, uh, pack 40 goes down. I'm, I Again, I'm just I'm shocked at this division choice. <laughs> well, let's put a positive spin on it and try and find <laughs> out what Kevs is trying to do here. Um, 75 mil trying to engage the guards. Briefly saw them thanks to the front of the But uh, yeah, it was a big investment in infantry here on the top side. I think this is one area where Kurz can potentially make use of his infantry if he can bring up some support in the form of the like AT gun. So he's got a 75 mil AT gun on the way. He might be able to uh, kill some of these tanks and, and use his infantry advantage here because his infantry is much better than Onord's is. Uh, so in those close range engagements he can definitely make something work yeah for sure i think that northern area is probably his best but at least in this area the tehrans are going to be a little bit more effective as well it's a little tighter you know there's a little bit more to work with over there in terms of like tight distances i mean there's no way he's winning down south i mean way down south he's got this push that he's kind of he, he's he's moving again they kind of held up for a little bit he's got the recon stuff it doesn't look like onord has really noticed the gravity of this push down south the significance of it yeah could capture a couple of flags here for you, a decent you, chunk of time because especially if it gets the infantry into a good position yeah and, and the, the truth is i understand like when i play this map i never look down here i'm literally like oh crap that's right there's another part of the map i hope nothing happened and usually nothing has but in this case something has happened and there goes two flags over to curs uncontested yeah, Onord will just look at the flags and be like, why is it 14 to 10 in favor of Kurs right now? And then he'll check the rest of the map and be like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> and then they realize that's but, uh, hasn't noticed yet. There's nothing coming in down there. Yeah, up the north. Top, we've got the, uh, yeah, the Hasarok engaging the guards, and Hasarok Sodashok should pin down the, the guards there as well. But TU2S, your favorite bomber, coming in to oh. help out. <sighs> These feel less <laughs> these feel less disgusting than they used to. Once they nerfed them price wise, they're way less spammy. What were they before? Like ninety points or something really stupid. T thirty forty five takes out the you. takes out the Tehran two outside of the town, and now there's really nothing there to stop this. Uh Tehran two the other Tehran two trying to take on the T thirty forty five, of course, cannot pen it. Uh it has no chance at all. Uh AA Bob taking ready yeah, seven. Yeah, he's not making it. Nope. Even if he does, it's going to be so spread it's not going to do anything. He's not making it. Nope. Comes up short. Yeah, he's also going to probably get shot down by the 25 mil. And um, we also have the SU-152 shoot killing the AA of Kurt. So things just going from bad to worse in the center of oh. the map. Oh. The Hamach is also getting killed by the PTRD. Oh, because it's a five-man squad, it does die in its half-track as well. That's brutal. Oh, Pack 40 is going to get the shot on to the 1943, however, but only one of the reverses into light cover. Kurz still making ground on this bottom side, Onord not reacting to it just yet. Oh, there we go. Finally, a couple guards being brought in to try and clear that out. But he has no idea what's down there. He might just think it's like one unit, so he might not invest enough to make that happen. Unit in the middle, and it goes down, and now the Yak-1 coming in for the clean kill onto the Hack 40 Nicely done. And that's back. But it's going to go to a 59, guys. <laughs> yeah. Another pack. Yeah, with the Pack 40 loss up north, though, I mean, we're only we're still in A phase, and if you brought one card of Pack 40s, that's it. Like, he's called three in, and that's all you get with one card. 
So this could be problematic. I mean, it was already problematic. He had very few ways to kill tanks, and now he seems to have even less. And now this Pack 40 is getting targeted. And this SU-152 just chunking the infantry. Oh, double Focke-Wolf F8's coming in. Try to take out this Yak yep. and fail. Oof. That was kind of embarrassing for the Focke Wolf 190s there because they did absolutely no damage. Now the TU2 coming in for the bombing strike onto the last of those Pack 40s in phase A. That is rough. Oh, oh it didn't actually kill the Pack 40. That's <laughs> incredible, actually, that it didn't manage to find that. And now this Focke Wolf. Oh, it's in a bad spot. The Yak 1B uh... somehow pulling off a miracle. And that Focke Wolf surely going to go down. <laughs> the 85 shot chasing it. Uh, now on the bottom side, the guards oh. getting into position to try and hold, but because you're going to be able to overwhelm the two guards there. Uh, I know I'm not really investing enough to stop that, but now the TU2 coming in with the bombing strike. He does have an idea now at least of what is there, but he's going to have to really find some more troops to push that back. Yeah, and the bombing strike is going to dig in. Yeah, it won't do a ton because the infantry are quite spread out. The, the go to shot shock took some damage, but everyone else is fine. Um, you know, and this is where you want your Turan 2 to be nice and tight here. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, on the top side, guards take out the uh, two health left on that pack 40. So that's now dead. T34 76 going for the kill onto 75 mil Get infantry so gun. Things getting very, very dicey here for guys on yeah. the top side. Uh, and, and remember, it's a 13-11 for Onord with the fact that Kurz has two extra flags down south. Although we see this cheeky grab here, this weird salient grabbing one of Kurz's flags here. <laughs> Very strange. Yeah, that one guard's DP actually holding three flags now getting pushed off it by the Kelek Palace because they come up. Uh, Yakwon B now coming in for the support on the bot side. And this is the trouble with pushing this far up into like enemy territory is that if you don't bring the AA support with you right from the get-go, you are just going to be able to get picked off like this. Oh, yeah. And these Yak-1Bs are really effective bombers with their 100-kilogram bombs. They do quite well. And, of course, the TU-2Ss are the TU-2Ss. Just very solid bombers overall. And even the infantry yeah. in the center town are getting slowly beaten down here. TU-2S coming in probably for this Goya Shuttershock here, I would assume. It should survive, but it's going to obviously be pinned. And now Got here the comes... Might jump forwards to get that surrender yeah. on the bottom side um it was one, one thing i noticed is that onord brought in this flamer and then like unloaded it really early and i assume it's because he was really worried that he was going to lose a spawn and i was just thinking like if kurz had to cut off that spawn on the bottom side that would have actually put him in a really nice position down there yeah maybe he should have just been more aggressive and tried to like weirdly flip this entire map <laughs> like play to top bottom kind of thing i don't even know like what the plan would be but I mean, at least you would have brought an AA, you could have just kept flowing into the back lines of an order. It would have been very interesting, but fortunately he did not make that play, and he keeps throwing troops into this T-3045. I'm not sure how he kills it. Uh, we are in phase B now, though, so I would assume some more pack 40 should be on the way. T-3476 down south took a pen from the Toldy 2. A nice side shot there. So they, he continues to hold those flags. These tankos going towards the center now, too, to clear us out. This is eh, this is good. This could still go any way. Kerr's still on the thirteen eleven. Yeah, he's still just about holding the lead on the tickets. Uh, we are also going to potentially see the headsers come in at some point, so those will actually be viable options for killing T thirty fours. Maybe not at range against the T thirty four nineteen forty four, but it will be in range to engage like the nineteen forty threes at least. Oh, yeah. Um, Kalek Palasok on the bottom side getting forced back. This infantry is getting a little bit thin. He's going to want more reinforcements down here soon. There's no way to get him there, though, really. I mean, like, it's a five minute drive around. <laughs> yeah, but doing so, like, sooner than later, right? And, and getting them on the walk early on so that they do arrive at the point in which he needs them is probably a good shout. Yeah, he did bring in the uh, Karak Korosok here down here. Parasok, excuse me. He, I mean, he's not moving him, though. I think he either forgot about him or had some other intention with them. Off map coming in, 210. Uh, I mean, it's a natural place to drop an off map, but the truth of the matter is there's really not much there. Maybe he'll kill, kill the T-34. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe he'll get lucky and kill the T-3045. That would be worth it on its own, uh, but we'll see. Well, I think that's... It's not the same one that got penned by the pack 40 because it doesn't look damaged when I zoom in, so maybe not. I don't if it wasn't already damaged, then that, that artillery is very unlikely to kill it. Yeah. I thought, I don't know. 
But if we look at the, the map, there's thing... not a lot of blue. <laughs> not yeah, lot. the only other thing that like Kurz could do here is use smoke. Uh, like if he were like you know on this bottom side, if he managed to cut off that spawn, he could probably like smoke the mid to get more reinforcements down that road into like the place where the, the guards DP are on the top side of the lake. Mm -hmm. And that could have been a nice play. Uh, but yeah, he is currently being beaten back heavily by Nord in the top side of the map now. Yeah, and uh, his recovery here is gonna make or break this game, I think. Yeah, he's got a pack forty coming in to try to kill this SU one five two. Killing those is pretty key, so he can start moving his soft units up. Uh, but up north, his infantry have been broken down. He'll probably lose his flag on the little island here, and the problem is too. Uh, or Nord's basically already cut off the reinforcement route to this, so once your infantry are dead here, I'd, I'd probably follow this Husodok back just to hold the flag, because once you're cut off of there, it's really hard to get back on that little island. Yeah, that T-34 covering the bridge would be really, really irritating. Uh, so, yeah, you're correct. That Husodok does not need to be there right now. Uh, Flamers versus Akhosok. The Kurs having a little bit of a hard time there, the two-man squad. And uh, now we've got uh, Shvalos uh, coming under fire from the SU-152, T-34, T-32, trying to kill off the Agnemachiki there. We do have a pack 40 coming down to cover the mid. If he can sneak that forwards, he might be able to pick off a SU-152, but there is a second one behind it that's going to be at range. <laughs> redundant. <laughs> it's got the redundancy already set. And down south, the infantry has been broken down even further. You have just one Husadok squad, and now the Tehran 2 is getting hunted down by his T-34-76. At this range, I mean, it may get super lucky, uh, but no, it didn't. It didn't get super lucky, and it died. <laughs> it was firing heat, so same penetration at any range. So uh, it still yeah. needs ninety on ninety. Is still you still got to get lucky. Indeed, yeah, indeed. That's what I mean. That's a, yeah, yeah. The max range is still only hitting what like thirty five percent. You are correct. Something I guess like you have a good chance of actually landing a shot at close range. I guess would be the better <laughs> way to say it. <laughs> True. Yeah, that looks like the Hasadok are going to go down. Avtain's charging them down regardless. Hasadok MG42 coming in to try and hold that, but uh, we're going to have to watch out for the T3476 taking that out across the bridge. Akasok finally deal with that two man infantry squad. And this bottom side is just waiting to be taken back by a Nord. Yeah, and once he does, it'll go to a 1410, and uh, 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 just everything's looking bad. <laughs> everything is looking quite rough so in the middle we have a double sniper moving forward to the two su 152s a 37 mil one sniper does go down to the 75 mil that's nice the other issue is now the pack 40 can't even safely move out because the ob25 is there as well like if that thing pokes his head out it's going to insta die basically here comes a hetzer finally coming in will it will it turn the tide I'm not really sure <laughs> we saw the Hasadok MG-22 get killed on the top road. <laughs> it died trying to cross the bridge. The T-34 did its job. Dri and now the Pack 40 trying to kill that back there. With the driver kill, it should should manage to do the job. But it misses. Oh my god, I would have just barfed from that second. I hate when these things hit the first shot and miss the second. I'm like, you already landed a hit. <laughs> we, yeah. we did it. So the Fockel, thing goes for anything, really. <laughs> yeah, no, it's very frustrating. So double 210 coming in. Uh, I only saw one drop. I guess it got pushed off too soon. Now, this one's going to die. Uh, I don't think that was worth it. Oh. Yeah, that is unfortunate. The first one got forced off by the first 85 mil shot. And the second one managing to get through, but costing its life hopefully that was the one that only had one strike left if it wasn't <laughs> i yeah. feel like curse will be kind of annoyed at this point yeah because those both have two strikes and the one's already placed it down south the salient has finally been closed with tron 2 down the husarok is getting pinned and it will be surrendered and there's a potential for a counter push here i mean if he just keeps driving that t3476 there ain't much there to stop him obviously not that he knows that but why would why would there be much down there to stop him really yeah, the Kenak Panasok finally working their way around. But uh, if, like, if he'd brought in more infantry and done this sooner, that Kenak Panasok would have been like further up. Any infantry and stuff he brought around there would have been fine. Uh, but alas, uh, 40M on the 75 mm tier gun engaging the SU-152 in the mid. We'll find the kill. Obi trying to get a shot on target there. That 40M is going to have uh, to be a runner. Yeah, he needs to run. He's going the wrong direction. There we go. He's now falling back. Now, the Hetzer is in position here to, to do some fighting. I'm always afraid to go up against OB-25s. They pen way better than they should. T-3045 looking stressed. I'm not sure why, though. I guess the off-map, perhaps? This Toldy 2 shouldn't really be doing it. 
Okay, maybe already took a shot from the Yakpanzo. Perhaps. Hats are moving forward now. Does it have a line of sight? It does. And down it goes. Finally killing that off. Yep. In the mid, OB. Just going to have to sit there and cover off against the AT gun. He can't really do anything against the next SG-152 for the time being. He's going to have to find a way to deal with the OB and sniper separately. Uh, the Hussadok, MG-42, and Akasok all unloading back there with the other Jagdpanzer, kind of just sitting around not really doing very much. Just about stopping this guard from capturing two more flags on the bottom side, at least. There's Kalak Palasok there capturing the bottom one. But yeah, it's only a matter of time, by the looks of it, that the floodgates open and Onord suddenly takes over half the map, uh, at least flag-wise, because uh, he's got like one, two, three, four flags basically on the brink of being captured here. Yeah. <laughs> which would send him wildly into the lead. Now up north, uh, Kurz did manage to get another infantry unit onto that little island, so that's actually a big deal. He can hold that off for a little bit, but he's got to position it right to stop these Gavardi before they get into cover. Because right now he's sitting in yellow cover, and if they end up in green, it's going to be really bad. But the TU-2S already coming in to bomb that. It appears to be off target, and the Nimrod is there as well. Nimrod being a fantastic AA piece. Actually, that and the 40 mil actually force it off finally before it drops a bomb. It'd be nice for it to get shot down as well. They never I die. I don't think he quite has enough to do that. TU-2Ss yeah, are immortal. Very, very strong. Yeah, they're immortal. They don't die. They just can't be killed. <laughs> in the middle... Lots more infantry piling in, yeah, into the middle, yeah. yeah. That's, that's potential. And, uh, yeah, and Kurs here actually having the armor advantage for once. Now, there's a T-3485 moving in. Can that Hetzer take care of it? But the Hetzer is currently side... Oh, oh no, it's going after the further Hetzer. The closer one, though, should have a shot. It does. I don't know if that's a micro mistake or just the AI picking a bad target. Missing yeah, twice. Sure. Oh, that's frustrating. Two misses out of the Hetzer so far. Did not land its hit yet. Three misses. What? Come on. Oh, wow. That off map is bad. Oh, my. <laughs> managed to penetrate T-34-85. There we go. <laughs> that that off map is going to be disgusting, though, when it lands. Finally takes so out traded. the... Yeah. Yeah, traded T-34 for a Jagdpanzer. That's, a, that's actually not bad at all. Nope. Jagdpanzer 38 trying to kill off the SU-152 almost did. Taking out both of those armored vehicles would actually be a huge swing in the mid here, but on the bottom side, the guards DP now just moving across the open with the 40 mil AT gun taken out, or the Pack 40 Look, the name always confuses me with the 40M. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it is 15-9, so he's going to be losing tickets, but this off map is brutal. <laughs> Yeah, the Hetzer down south died as well. I think it died to that OB-25. I don't see what else would have killed it. I'm telling you, that OB-25 <laughs> has way higher... It says 90 millimeters penetration. It has like 1,000 millimeters penetration. It pens everything. It's ridiculous. It's just low penetration chance, but high damage. That's the problem. I the tanker with the double surrender on the top side, thanks to the off map. The 85 mil killed the Hetzer up there as well. So <laughs> things going from bad to worse here. Again, because he looked like he was just about getting back on his feet, and then, yeah, it's, uh, it's falling apart rapidly. Recon, this recon uh, two-man squad killed the Gavardia DP in the transport, but it gets deleted. Oh, that's a sad face. <laughs> yep, Shvalas are coming up, not really in the right place anymore. Hasselok. The MG42 going to be trying to hold off the double guard on the bottom side, but T3476 is creeping. And that's not going to be good news because it doesn't really have the range to, to deal with that. Jagdpanzer in the mid going to try and stop these tankos. And does manage to take out one squad. But oh, the AT oh. gun getting caught up by the guards. Oh. No. <laughs> uh, it's so hard to watch transport snipes because it happens to all of us, but it's just so hard to see. Because you know how, like, it, it, it's so crushing to watch your stuff die in transport you're like i got no value out of that at all like zip not yeah. a zilch 60 points down the drain and since we are into phase c 60 points is quite a lot of points uh, as both players now have 80 points per minute to spend yeah oh, hasselok mg42 getting surrendered now just the schwarlos are in the way that the t34 can get rid of 152 coming down again. Not a ton of targets there, though. Kurtz is kind of moving back into it. Oh, 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 oh my goodness, the amount of HE. 
It's just destroying those infantry. <laughs> Go to Shoshok. Do take out a Gavardi in the transport. They, of course, survive because it's a machine gun. Here comes his own 210, I believe. So it looks like the one with more charges survived, unless this is just a feint. Is it a feint? Well, they both would have had one left. It's just one would have had uh, two strikes, right? Uh, I get, yeah, 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 I guess you're right. Well, it didn't even get it off, so irrelevant, I guess. Oh, Botan dies from the SU-152. Of course, that's fully deleted because of that. Hetzer out of range now. SU-152s and gorillas can be so obnoxious that way that they just keep bobbing in and out of range. It's so frustrating. Bottom side, 75 mil's got to be a hero. Can it find the shot? No, it can't. The full back off from Gers there is going to get it killed, to be honest. Like, it probably should have just gone for a last-ditch effort with the last shot. Hasadok, gonna hold back the guards for the time being, Lovis. Further forwards, gonna be doing the same. But this off map is relentless, it keeps coming down. And now we see a, another pack 40 die into the SU 152 further up. The guards have got on the island there, it's gonna make things very difficult. AT gun goes down on the bottom side. Shvalos are holding back the guards, but the Z34 should be able to deal with that. I'm just surprised that Kurz is able to hold on right now, but I, I think was, it's just the nature yeah. of Tali Ihantala. Yeah, I was just about to say, this is the most, like, shaky 1410 I've ever seen. <laughs> it is like, <laughs> like this, this shouldn't be a 1410. This should be, like, easily 16-8. But the second this pocket in the center finally gets killed off, this pocket down, there goes the south pocket. So that'll be two flags. So we'll be at a 15-9, take out some of these infantry, and all of a sudden you're maybe even at a triple tick at this point. Double Yagpans are there, managing to get shots onto the T-3485 and in the mid. Fails, though. Oh, that one. Yep. Yeah. Oh, oh, it couldn't have got worse. Uh, the SP-152 wow. shooting off crit, and then the T-3485-94 already four getting the kill. Uh, yeah, 16-8. <laughs> now it's looking like it should do. <laughs> yes, I feel like the, uh, the, the meme with the kid with the veins bulging out of his head watching that, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> like you yeah, right. we all know the feeling we really do i was arguing with someone vulcan the other day because they were talking about a flak 88 having 110 percent uh you know good penetration on a tank they're like how did he not penetrate that tank it had 76 percent pen chance i was like well you forgot my my bad luck debuff it goes down to 25 percent for everything <laughs> all penetration is 25 percent yeah Anytime it's not 100%, it's it's basically 0%. <laughs> it's, you're basically <laughs> 1 in 5 pens. <laughs> <laughs> so on the bottom side, Asago, Yasalashok coming in, but they're not going to get close with that AT support. Asago, uh, Hasarok in the middle, dealing with double 45 my AT gun, which are actually going to win that engagement, which is rather depressing. Tanko is going to be able to take care of the Hasarok in the trees there as well, yep. which gives more flags to... Oh, Nord, another two flags, in fact, bringing us to a triple tick. There it is. At this point in the game, that's uh, very rough. Now T2S and a Yak-1B coming in for the mid. The 40 mil AA is very low and stressed. It might just get bombed out. Yeah, we'll see here. Yak's going to get forced up, but the TU2S probably... Well, the Nimrod's here as well, but I don't think it's going to stop it in time. It did manage to get its bombs off. It's yeah. just, are they accurate enough? On the bottom side, TU2S takes out the Schwalozer that was holding position there. So now we're 19 5. Oh. That's rough. JU87 down south did take out the T3045, but, uh, excuse me, 76. These Husa, Husa go to Shoto Shocks have a long walk to do, especially with only three minutes on the 19 5 triple tick going on here. Oh. Yeah, and the Lovis in the middle not going to be doing well against four units of guards. It's just nothing left on the map for Kers right now. He's bringing in stuff nah. to fight on the bottom side, but he's just firefighting with no water. <laughs> he's fanning the flames. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to blow really hard. <laughs> it's only making it worse. <laughs> it's just right. And now the 105 off map's about to die to the T3045. I think it fired off once. And now, oh, wow. Somehow it still lifts. Yeah, it's gone. There it it's goes. Gone. Well, uh, 75 more AT guns coming in. I mean, this is just this is just over. I'm surprised that Kurz is trying to play us out with the amount of units that he's got left on the map. Um, yeah, I, people will call me a a quitter but i would have quit it when that triple tick happened i would have been gone <laughs> like that's enough this is this is unpleasant now 
Guarantee you to ask coming in again. These have been a problem from the beginning. And whilst Kurz did bring in AA like very early on, probably identified that this would have been potentially a problem, there has never been a point at which he could have shot them down because Onord also invested in his AA, which made the Focke Wolves kind of redundant in this game. Well, and also Kurz like sent his fighters after AA. So like they would get damage and we need to be repaired. So they were, I don't think they were even around half the time to be called in. Faka will off map going after the yak. <laughs> now it's getting hit by the 25 mil. Oh. Nice try. <laughs> 75 more engaging the OB. OB with the rate of fire though. Might just win out. Oh, it's going to trade. Oh, we don't get to see. I think the 75 mil won that one. But Kerr's going to be surrendering. With the 27 minutes, 47 seconds on the clock. Congratulations to Onord. Takes the first game of this best of three in the third place final. And a convincing KD. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, 3,400 to 1,560. It wasn't, I don't want to say it wasn't much of a game, but it, it from the get-go, Onord was smacking down. I, the only reason Kurz lasted that long was because of some really heads-up macro play. You know, down south, grabbing that pocket of stuff, you know, making good plays. But this this was a poor division matchup on this map. Um, I almost think that Kurz could have done more on that bottom side. Yes. Like, he could have gone for the cut off. He could have preemptively reinforced the infantry around the bottom of the lake um, so that his position was much stronger. Maybe even got like AA super far up. And if you get it close enough to the spawn, then that's like really awkward for the TU2s because they have to like do the circle before they can bomb, right? Yep. And there is a lot of potential there for that play on the bottom side, but didn't really develop it after the start and just fed stuff in the middle. Yeah, it kind of felt like he did that and then didn't expect it to work. And then it didn't. He was like, what do I do with this? <laughs> <True. laughs> like, you know, it's just like, you know, a, a dog that actually catches its tail. What, what, what does it do now? Kind of thing. And if we go over to the kills, we can see here everything that had more than 1750 meters range absolutely decimated. Uh, SU-152, 85 mil AA, the T-3485, the other SU-152, the, the bot. I mean, every I mean, just everything got value. You, you, it's hard to win when everything does this well. Yeah, it's the beauty of the uh, 44th Guards is they just have a lot of good value for money units. And the SU-152s are like the pinnacle of that. Oh, yeah. They're so On good. On the side of of cares though, things not looking so great. Definitely not as much value. Some of the Tolans and like the Toldi here getting three infantry kills. That's not too bad. Uh, but otherwise... It's a very short yeah. list. <laughs> very, I was like, I was scrolling and it hit the bottom really fast. And I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yep, that that would be. Well, yeah, yeah, an unfortunate game there for Kurz. We'll have to see if he can bring it back in game two. Uh, anything else you'd like to say, Attack Bar? No, sorry to Kurz for a tough game one, but definitely turnaroundable. Uh, he's definitely a player that can pull himself back out of a hole like this. So we'll see. Congrats to Honor. Yep, that's it. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Okay,